Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from the Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of the show. We've got a great guest here today from Germany's progressive metal veterans, Vanden Plaas. We've got drummer Andreas Lil. Andreas, welcome to the show. So good to have you here. Nice to meet you. Thanks. So, you know, it's actually a great time that Andreas is here joining us because we've got the brand new album from Vanden Plaas coming. It's either, did it just come out or it's coming, I think coming out here in the U.S. in two weeks, I think. Uh, maybe it's available in Europe already, but I think it's coming out here, I think the beginning of December. Yeah, and the name of the album is uh, The Ghost Experiment Illumination. Right. Okay, so this is actually part two of a concept album that the band released in 2019 called The Ghost Experiment Awakenings. And it's, uh, Andreas, it's out about almost a year to the date, right? I think it was just about a year ago where the first part came out. And uh, you guys have been hard to work on this. So for those who might have missed the first album, can you talk a little bit about the storyline of the album? You know, it's all about this character, Gideon Grace. How did this concept come together? I mean, you guys are no strangers to concept albums. So where did the storyline for this one first start? And uh, can you talk a little bit about the whole process of putting these two albums together? Okay, um, first the story, it's, uh, it's Andy's um, um, thing to think about because he's, he, very like, he likes it very much to um, work on a concept story because it's, um, I think it's also easier for a singer in this case to have a, a story uh, which is already there and you put in your stuff like we did it with, with Christ Zero uh, years ago. And um, there's a story with um, about uh, paranormal uh, things to, to create a ghost kind of that stuff, which happens I think in Canada uh, years ago and um, they, came up with um, some people to create, to try to create a, a ghost. So, and, and what happens there is the main thing of the story. And uh, uh, Andy came up with a character called Gideon Grace. Um, and uh, this is a main character of the album. And when we um, uh, first started the recordings uh, two years ago, we found out that we have much more mater material that we uh, can put on one CD. So we thought about, okay, let's hold back three songs. And um, because it's always with Fun Plus, it's uh, kind of hard to, to, uh, to be in time with a new album. It takes sometimes, you know, a lot of years. And so we said, oh, that's easy for us. We uh, already have three songs and we, put on uh, four new songs and there we are with the second album within one year which we put together in a kind of a double album um, and so that's maybe easy for us and e easy for the fans to follow that story and um, yeah, that came out in a very good way because we have now I think we have um, two albums which are close about 50 minutes of music each and uh, otherwise we've had already 80 minutes, which is too much for one CD. And so we decide to do that. And so I, I have had to, or everybody of the musicians has had to go to a recording studio again to do some more three or five, four songs, which is not too much, but that was a deal this time. So, I mean, you know, musically, uh, Illumination, it's a pretty heavy album, I think, but it has all those kind of trademark progressive elements and lots of solo spots, complex arrangements and exchanges, which, you know, you guys are pretty well known for. Uh, and I think um, I, I kind of like where I'm going here, like with a big concept like this, how hard is it for you as a musician and the rest of the band to kind of bring forward that epic storyline and keep it flowing between two albums now, yet yeah. still provide all the musical fireworks that Van der Plaas is well known for. Is, is that a difficult balance to do, tell a story and bring all these exciting uh, musical passages, album after album after album, which you guys seem to do very, very well? It's, I think this album uh, is a little bit heavier 
than the albums before because uh, Stefan, our guitar player, my brother, he's the main songwriter for this one. And of course, there are more guitar riffs, which sounds heavier. And um, before that, we've, we've did that albums, which were always a lot of orchestral uh, instruments on it. And that softened it a, a little bit. So, and it was kind for me, kind of at the end overloaded with uh, classical instruments. And I, um, we have had a discussion um, in the band and I, which I started because I was a little bit, uh, I have to put on my deep, so, ah, now I have light. <laughs> but I think so much, so much. Did, are we on? Are we on uh, camera, or is it just the uh, audio which you record? You're on camera. You're on camera. So you look great now. Yep. There you go. No, I, I mean, for you are recording it for 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 your um, broadcast. Yes. Do, yes. Do, do do you do it on uh, audio or video too? Uh, both. Both. Also, oh, I have to look good. You look fine, Andreas. You look fine. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, feel, I'm feeling good. So, and um, that's smoother. And um, um, so um, I was not so lucky with the productions before because, you know, it, it always have to sound uh, uh, like a band with orchestra a little bit for me. So it's my opinion. We have had a discussion to bring it back into the old, um, old rules. And um, so that happened to came out very well for me. It sounds very heavy and uh, a lot of guitar riffs. Um, and the, the thing uh, um, with, uh, with the story is um, that Stefan and Günther, they have their songs, which they come up with. And um, uh, Andy has his story. And so these three guys sit together and uh, Stefan with Andy or Günther with Andy and Andy is looking for some uh, kind of a song and uh, Stefan, for example, has a song and he explains it or shows it to Andy in his pre-production and then he says, oh, that's exactly what I need for this part of the story. And so they fit together the best songs for this story. That's the way we work. Uh, it makes total sense. So. So in saying all that, yeah, I, th I also agree. I think the album is heavier. And I, I noticed that on the last album as well, that you guys seem to be going more in that direction. Uh, but you have one track on the album, which I think is a little bit different than the rest. I'm sure you know which one I'm going to mention. Black Waltz Death. Okay. Stunning, stunning piece. Um, you know, it's got these lush arrangements and absolutely breathtaking lead and backing vocals. Um, to me, it sounds like a lot of work went into that song, not that the rest of the album doesn't, but was it a challenge to put all those elements together? And did you think it would come out as good as it, as it did? Because I mean, that's, a, that's an amazing song. Yeah, th and the thing is, this song is from an older recording session. Ah, okay. So we, we, we record, that was a kind of a leftover from older recording sessions and we kind of pimped it up because how, I don't know why, but it came out that this song, which is still, or was still on tape and recorded, uh, was fitting exactly to what Andy needed there. And so we came back on that recording and pimped it up a little bit. And, uh, uh, so there's a different vibe on that because you, you can pimp on it, but you can change it totally, and it's it's uh, it's not a very old old song, but it's um, I, I think it is maybe recorded uh, six or eight years ago. I can't tell it now directly, but it's and 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 uh, everyone hears it that it that something is special on that song that song, which is maybe interesting because um, yeah, I, I mean. It's always interesting to have very different elements on a CD instead of all the songs are, you know, kind of the same. So it has to fit together in a, in some way, but that, that song is very special, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does fit with the album. It, it sticks yeah. out a little bit, but it fits. And you know what it reminded me of? Um, your fellow countrymen, uh, Primal Fear. Yes. They have a habit of, on, or, you know, they're more of a power metal band, obviously, yeah. but on almost all of their albums, they include one very symphonic 
epic sounding yeah. song, very melodic. And that's when I heard Black Walt's Death, it kind of reminded me a little bit of how, how they would do that, put something like that on now. Even though, you know, your band is, you know, well known for writing pieces kind of like this, these big, um, grand, majestic, symphonic songs. But I think on this album, it actually fits in very, very well. Yeah, thank you very much. You, you, uh, you have a, always a different point of view. If you, if you are listen in, uh, listening to it like totally new, and, and uh, if, if you are part of the process, you're, you're always totally in it and you diff your ears are totally different. And you, you see, or you, yeah, you see the song totally different than everybody else. For me, it's, yeah, I, an old song from Van Plassenau, which is now on the CD, okay, because it fits, yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> and I, I, because if you are talking about Primal Fear, we've had the chance to have to play on a Frontiers Festival, I think maybe three years ago in Italy with them. And I was really overwhelmed how good and professional they are. Really strong band. I liked it very much. The whole show was very powerful, great. Yeah, they're, they're very good live. I've seen them live here a couple of times in the US and they're, they're very, very good. Yeah, great. Like so this is a question, my next question, I've wanted to ask anybody in your band for years now. So you guys have done a lot of concept albums and in recent years you've done like two part concept albums, you've, you know, a lot of really, really intricate, um, challenging listens for the, for the viewers. Do you ever, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm asking you specifically, do you ever have a desire to, that, or hope that maybe one day Van de Plaus will just do an album with a bunch of songs that don't like relate to each other, just as a kind of like a little palate cleanser to get away, maybe just for one album from the concept album and just do a selection of songs that have nothing to do with each other. I think that will never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, because we, I think the first album we ever did, Color Temple, was a kind, yeah, that we, we were a young band and we collected all the songs which we played live and we worked on and then we, uh, we, we, we were recording before but we just put things on tape and so on like you start. And at that point we, we uh, discussed about, okay, you have to be, uh, you, can, you have to, um, to be, if you want to get on the market as a band, you have to catch up to every big band, which, was, which has a CD at that time. And so we said, okay, let's make a CD on our own. We, we produced it by ourselves, no record company, nothing. And um, at that time that were our strongest live songs and no story behind it. It was just maybe 20, we have had 20, 24 live songs we rotated and played. And then we came up with that are the best songs at the moment to record and make a CD. And after that, we produced that, uh, we, we sent it to, to record companies and luckily we got deals. And uh, then the God thing was, I think at that time, Andy started to connect the songs, not really concept album, but to have a red line, which is floating through the songs a little bit. And, and that became much more with Far of Grace. And after that, he, he really found himself uh, in a good way also to, to uh, create his work, to have a story together. And, um, and he, he, first of all, he's very good at that. And second, he likes it. So, and he third of it, he's a singer. So, yeah, true. <laughs> and end of story, we'll, we will never do again a, a, a CD or production without a story. Right. <laughs> And let's be honest, most of the fans of this particular genre of music like that sort of thing. And there's a reason why Symphony X and Dream Theater and Camelot and so on and so forth do lots of conceptual albums or, like you mentioned, songs that would appear on albums that have somewhat of a theme that go from album to album. So I, that's what the fans like, right? So it, it helps that the fans dig it. But more importantly, if you've got, you know, your main songwriter and that's what they like doing, that's, that's how it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, um, 
he is and he's a big part of the songwriting with the lyrics. So, and uh, Stefan and Günther, which are writing the music, the in a musical way, they don't have to connect too much the songs because they always connect a little bit because every song sounds like Fun Plus or each band which is doing uh, a CD, the songs uh, sound like that band. And, um, but they don't have to sound similar or it's, or it's, not, it's not very good if they sound too similar. Right. But if you have a story that's, I mean, if you're not interested in that story, so just listen to the music and just listen to the vocals in that way you like. Maybe the vocals are just a kind of a, a melodic instrument from some people, so, but it doesn't disturb. Right. But if you, if you like a story, so you can dig in deeper. Do it. Is that right, um, English? Yeah. Dig in. Yeah. yeah. So so I mean, uh, and and at the end we do it. First of all, we do it for ourselves because we like to create that music, and that's the way we found which works for us. And if people like it and um, uh, uh, like to listen to it, and we we can uh, go on. Um, working that way because it has to make some commercial sense also because you don't want to pay uh, 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 to play or to record uh, so at the moment that's a good way to work and uh, people hopefully come back to live shows and so why change uh, because we are so old now and it's not not so much time to change again and uh, yeah. hope that it works <laughs> yeah i think you know there are, there are people, um, you know, music lovers who really get into following the story, reading the lyrics along with listening to the music. There are some people like myself who always listen to albums for the music first. Uh, I tend to, especially in my later years, I tend to very rarely do I really sit and go and read the lyrics along to the album. I used to do that when I was younger. I don't do it as much anymore. Um, so it all depends. But like you mentioned, even if you're really not that interested in the story, and I'm specifically talking about Van Plaus now, it's like there's those rich vocal harmonies, the catchy hooks, the layers of keyboards and the crunchy guitar riffs and blazing solos, the intricate drumming, all those elements are there. So even if you really don't care about the lyrics much, there's a lot to enjoy from a musical perspective. And that's kind of what it's all about. So and if you like both, if you appreciate lyrics and music, you get a lot of that with this band. And that's, I think that's a good thing. And that's, I think one of the reasons why you guys have lasted so long and you have such a nice loyal following because you deliver the goods album after album after album and fans can always expect that high quality from you. Yeah, I think for me, it's kind of the same uh, because I, I'm also not that guy which is also too deep in the lyrics, you know. Um, for me, the music has to fit first. It has to move me somehow. Right. And um, so uh, I like to hear if some people, or I like it for myself, if I listen to music and I, I find something new in a song or a CD after listening to it for a few times, you know, for the first time you think, yeah, it's good, it's good. And then if you listen to it a few times more and you, you always here's something new, uh, which you think, wow, that wasn't there first time, you know, because there is so much. Um, and you that makes it worse to listen to it a few times. And even if you, uh, if you have heard everything, you can take care about the lyrics uh, if you want, so. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been following the band since the very beginning. And I've always felt that it's a real shame that Van and Plas is not widely known here in the US. You have a core following of people who, you know, obviously enjoy this type of music. Um, have there ever been any opportunities in the past? I mean, you've been around as a band for a long time uh, to do any touring here in the US at all. And, or is it just not something you really try to do because of the cost of it all? And, you know, why has that never really happened here? I mean, we, we have had that um, uh, um, time where we've been on tour very much. That was where it started uh, when, when Dream Theater came over and we supported them on a six weeks European tour in 1998. 
And uh, before and after that, we also did a lot of nightliner tours on Europe, uh, which worked very well at that time. Not, not, I mean, not very, very big band, but it, it was working and um, it became harder in the midst of the uh, um, 20, in the zero year, so 2006, it started to become harder and harder in Europe. We, we did also all our shows, but um, it costs also more. Each year, the costs exploded more and more, and makes some, and after a while, we start to make, you know, at the beginning, we played to, uh, tours like playing every day, one day off, maybe it's Monday day off and six shows in a row. And then we went for three weeks, kind of that. And after a while, the, it became harder to, to uh, get people for Tuesday, Wednesday shows. And then you start to play just four shows in a row. Then you go back because you can't pay for three days off. Sure. And um, that's the way we worked in the last years. Most bands did that, which are on our level. Of course, if you are a very big band, you can play each day everywhere and people are showing up. And with the States, it li it, it's like um, we tried, but um, it came out that we have that uh, Prop Power uh, Festival in Atlanta where we played a few times, which is great because everybody who loves that kind of music um, is there. Okay. And um, um, we, we tried to tour in the States, but you, you need somebody um, there, which is organizing it for you. And uh, you need for, uh, first of all, you need the sales. Because if you have sales, if, if you sell your CD uh, very well, everybody wants to make a tour with you. And uh, that became harder and harder because you have this streaming stuff and everything, and there's not so many money in it right now, which was 20 years ago, because everybody was paying for CDs and had the CD and there was more money and it became harder. Yeah. So if in saying all that, so if a promoter came to you tomorrow and said, you know what, we want to bring the band to the US for a six week tour, you know, major cities, and we want to pair you up with two other bands in the same genre to go out and do this tour with. So a triple bill, three bands. Yeah. Who, would, who would you pick as the other two bands? I mean, everybody uh, would expect the answer like uh, Dream Theater and Symphony X. That, because that's, I mean, that's the biggest band in, uh, in progressive music. Uh, but I, I mean, that, that would be the best because people would like to see uh, uh, fun plus in that kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, company. Yeah. That makes the most sense. Uh, I think that would be the best, but I... Yeah, if, if I were to choose it, that would have been my first choice. I yeah. think uh, if I were to pick another two that I think could work, how about Nightwish and Camelot and and Fandom Plus? That, yeah, I think that uh, would work too for us, of course. <laughs> uh, um, uh, and, um, but maybe that's, um, if you have the point of view that it's more interesting, that would be better because um, it's a little bit more different. Yes. Otherwise you have three bands which are very close together, very, very similar, not, not very similar, but more similar than Night Vision Camelot. Yeah, because I think probably a lot of Dream Theater and Symphony X fans are probably, hopefully, already listening to your band, whereas maybe some Night Wish and Camelot fans are, maybe they aren't. So that actually, that bill might actually open you up to more new fans, I would think. Yeah, yeah would, would help us more, yeah. And I think the also still the Dream Theater tour, which we did uh, uh, more than 20 years ago, it's still, ha it's, always we, we meet people on tour which say i follow you since that tour where you've been supporting dream theater that helped us so much yeah, yeah. and that was a great time you know it was it was like being a rock star you know because <laughs> every every day we played a big venue really big 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 and the crowd was really 
treating us well, because it's not always as a support band, it's not always like uh, the best um, part, you know, because a lot of people are just waiting for the main act, but the, the Dream Theatre fans were really great and they, uh, it's kind of uh, people which will, even if they didn't heard from us ever, say, well, like, yeah, let's get, give them a chance and listen to them and it was a very good time. Yeah. You know, it's funny, we just had just this past weekend, uh, we did a virtual Sea of Tranquility Fall Fest, uh, about three hour, not so much a concert, it, it, I guess you could call it an online event, uh, because obviously nobody's going to concerts right now during COVID-19. So we put together uh, a three hour event made up of over 20 different bands and artists who contributed you know, like videos that they've done in their home studios during COVID or maybe some live performances that they recorded just prior to COVID or recently that maybe not many people have seen that sort of thing. And I gotta, I gotta say it was, a, it was a very a big success. And if I decide to do it maybe next year, another one next year, I, I would love for you guys to be a part of that. We, of course, we, we would love to do that. And uh, we, we want to go back to the situation, you know, to play live. And I think every musician and um, hopefully not too much changes, you know, we'll see. I, I, I start to, to um, just rushes right now for six months because I think the small cl uh, club gigs will restart first, you know, people sitting on um, tables, you know, having dinner and, and I go with brushes, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's, I think it will take time till we are back to normal. Yeah, let's see. Hopefully both. We'll see. We'll see. So uh, before I let you go, Andreas, uh, let's talk a little bit of drum stuff here. So from a drummer's perspective, um, who are some of the players that you grew up idolizing and listening to uh, that kind of helped inspire you? And then are there any like younger drummers or current drummers on the scene today that you kind of keep a watch on? So I, I grew up, up with punk music first. That was Sex Pistols. Paul Cook was a drummer. Of course, he was not the best drummer, but I, I started with that. And then I changed over to Van Halen, which I really admired Alex Van Halen, his powerful drumming and very technical too. And um, that's also hard, you know, to play heavy, but still technical. And with, a, with something you also, you listen to two seconds of music and can say that's Van Halen or Alex Van Halen or also, of course, Eddie Van Halen. And um, then uh, uh, a journey uh, with Steve Smith on drums was a yeah. big impact for me. Of course, I, I discovered Mike Portnoy uh, in the end of the 90s when we've been on tour together. I wasn't a big fan of Dream Theater before, I didn't know that. I was much more in Van Halen journey stuff. But, but still, you have to listen to the old heroes and also Buddy Rich. If you are a drummer, you need to know Buddy Rich. It's, of course, big band and kind of jazzy stuff, but I look to it to the old videos from Buddy Rich from, I mean, weekly. Every week I, it pops up somewhere and it's so great. So the old guys, 60 years ago, they they knew how to drum. Oh, yeah. So listen to everything. I mean, of course, that's not double bass stuff, and but you have to take that uh, in your technique too. So double bass and hands. Yeah, I mean, you know, Buddy Rich, Art Blakey, Billy Cobham, uh, Tony Williams. You know, yeah. those are some great, great players. Back yeah, so many, so many. But that was my two main influences, Alex Van Halen and Steve Smith. Cool. Any guy, any current guys that you kind of watch a little bit here and there? Which, which guys? Uh, anybody, any newer players that you kind of have noticed that you've been impressed with? Uh, yeah, of course, Greg Bissonnette, which uh, came up with uh, David D. Ross band first, and his uh, follower, uh, Ray Lucia, which is with Korn since years now. Um, that, that was, Greg Bissonnette was also at in, in the yeah, I didn't forget him, but I mean he Alex Van Halen and Steve Smith were, Smith were before, but uh, Greg Bissonnette with uh, uh, David Lee band that was also 
great, great. And Ray Lucia, he's also very heavy with a great technique. And of course, I forgot a lot uh, of uh, dramas, which uh, which I really, I, I, I listen to different styles and try to take out um, every, you know, thing which I um, uh, find on also, uh, Tony Williams. I, I have had a look on a video yesterday where he played brushes. And I mean, this guy is great. He doesn't play my kind of music, but I mean, as a drummer, you, has, uh, you have to just listen and look and say, that's great. And maybe I, I can uh, take a few licks out of his playing and put it in my playing. That's, that's the best way. So you don't get become a copy of, um, uh, of just one drummer because some guys are just fan of Simon Phillips, which is great too, and they copy him in every beat and that's not that's not the way for me. But I, I, I got a message, I have had the second interview on Sam 30 now, I, I think we have to stop because Sounds good. That sounds good. I totally understand. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for joining us here on CA Tranquility. We greatly appreciate it. Best of luck to, with the new album. It's fantastic. So everybody make sure you check it out. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. For Andreas from Vandenplas, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Take care. Thank you very much.